Hey guys, what's going on? MJ Madness here, and today I'm going to be breaking down for you my predictions for all of the NHL awards. So basically, in this video, what I'm going to be doing is giving you my picks for all the major awards like Rookie of the Year, MVP, all those kind of things. And then at the end, I will give you my picks for who's going to win the Stanley Cup. Um, this is the third part of my series where I've been predicting the upcoming NHL season. It starts in a day, at least from the time I was recording this video. So I really thought it would be nice to get some predictions out. So if you haven't seen the other two parts of the series, I did one video predicting the Eastern Conference standings and one video predicting the Western Conference standings. Those are also on my channel, so be sure to check those out as well if you're interested. But anyway, now let's get into the video. I will be giving you my picks. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first trophy I'm going to be looking at is the Vesna Trophy or the Goalie of the Year Trophy. So basically what this looks at is the goaltender that did the best and was the most successful in the National Hockey League. Now last year the award was won by Braden Holtby of the Washington Capitals, but a lot of people think this year it's going to go to Carey Price. He is uh, undisputedly, at least in my opinion, the best goaltender in the NHL. But the best goaltender doesn't always win the award, which is my my pick for the Vesna Trophy is actually Corey Schneider of the New Jersey Devils. And now I'm going to explain to you why. If you watch my video predicting the Eastern Conference standings, I had New Jersey as my dark horse pick to make the playoffs. And I think that Corey Schneider is going to be one of the main reasons they do so. Carey Price is always amazing, but he's not as important to his team as Corey Schneider is to the Devils, and I predict that if Corey Schneider can stand on his head and lead the Devils to the playoffs, he's going to surprise a lot of people by winning the Vesna Trophy. Next, I'm going to be looking at the Norris Trophy. So the Norris Trophy is awarded to the best defenseman in the NHL over the course of the entire season. Uh, there's definitely a lot of really solid defensemen that contend for this award. Usually it's won more by defensemen that score a lot of points rather than defensemen that actually play a solid defensive game, which is why even though I believe Drew Doughty is the best defenseman in the game because he doesn't score as much as, say, some other guys, then I don't really think he's going to be winning the award this season. So I had it come down to a lot of really good guys, people like P.K. Subban, Victor Hedman, but in the end, I'm giving it to Eric Carlson of the Ottawa Senators. Eric Carlson, he's won the award before. He is another absolutely amazing defenseman. He's a really smooth skater. He can shoot the puck a lot, and he scores. So that's all, a lot of what you need to win the Norris Trophy for best defenseman in the NHL. So even though I predict that his team is going to have an underwhelming season, I think him, like as a solo individual, is going to have a great season, and I think he's going to win another tro Norris Trophy to add to his resume. Uh, now we'll be looking at the Rookie of the Year, or the Calder Trophy. Now, Austin Matthews was the one drafted first overall, so most people automatically assume he's going to be the one that wins the Calder. But if you look at recent history, uh, the, more often than not, the first overall pick doesn't actually win the Rookie of the Year. So that's definitely something you can look to, uh, and why I'm not actually picking Austin Matthews. Uh, Austin Matthews is a generational talent, He's an absolute stud. He looks amazing. And I think in the long term, he's going to be the best player coming out of this draft class. But he's still pretty young. And I'm sure he's going to have an amazing season. But points-wise, I don't know how great he's going to do. And I look to the number two overall pick, Patrick Laine. And he's my pick to win the Rookie of the Year. He was drafted by the Winnipeg Jets. And this guy's an absolute goal scorer. He's kind of built in the mold of Alex Ovechkin. He drives hard. He's a power forward. He likes to just bang and go and crash the net. And that gets him a lot of points in junior. And I think it's going to carry over a lot into his first season at the NHL. Another big thing is that Winnipeg has said they'll be giving him a lot of minutes, putting him on that second line and allowing him free weight reign to like score goals and stuff like that. With Toronto, I think Austin Matthews is going to be great as a playmaker, but he's not going to be as important, have as big of a role on that team. And I think because of that, even though in the future Austin Matthews should become the better player of the two, 
at least in the short term, I'm picking Patrick Laine to win the Calder Trophy for Rookie of the Year. Uh, next, I'll be looking at the Hart Trophy, which is the most valuable player in the NHL. Um, this is a really tough one to decide. You have to pick the player that's going to be the most important to his team. So even though maybe Sidney Crosby is one of the best players, because there's so many superstars around him, he's not necessarily the most valuable because you know Pittsburgh could still do well without him. Like, it's the same with like what's happening in Chicago, right? Patrick Kane's amazing, but he has another top five player in Jonathan Taves. So his like skill is being kind of held back a bit for winning that MVP trophy. So that's why my MVP, probably the most surprising choice for a lot of you, I am going with Johnny Gaudreau of the Calgary Flames. Now, he actually just signed a new contract today, like the day before the season starts. They left it a little late, but they signed him for six years at $6.75 million, an absolute steal in my opinion. Last year, he was like number 11 for points scored. And I think this year, if you watch my Western Conference preview, you know I put the Flames as a surprise playoff team. And I think he's going to be the, the main reason that team gets into the playoffs. And because of that, I predict him to be the most valuable. He just has so much skill. He's so young, so talented. I really absolutely enjoy watching him play. He's a great generational player, and I think he's going to be uh, really solid this team for that this year for that Calgary Flames team. They have a lot of really good pieces around him. You know, TJ Brody, Mark Giordano, Sean Monahan, Michael Backlund, Dougie Hamilton, Brian Elliott, and Nett. All of those guys are extremely solid, but none of them are really superstars, meaning Johnny Gaudreau is going to be need to be that big, big reason that Calgary gets to the playoffs. And I think if he can have that amazing season and score his way into leading Calgary to a playoff berth, then definitely he's going to be my dark horse pick to win the MVP. And the final award I'm going to be talking about before my Stanley Cup picks, I'm going to be looking at the leading scorer in the NHL or the Art Ross. Now for this one, I'm looking down to the teams that I said would really do extremely well this season, the Dallas Stars, and I'm going with Jamie Benn. I think Jamie Benn is one of the most underappreciated superstars in this game, maybe because he plays in Dallas, which isn't a huge market for hockey, but he doesn't get nearly enough love, and I think he's really such an amazing goal scorer, and I think this is the year he really shows the NHL that he can be, although he already is a superstar, I think he, he'll really prove that he is one of the best of the best and needs to be up there with the Sidney Crosbys, the Steven Stamkos, the John Tavares of the world. And I think this is his breakout season where he really shows the NHL that he means business, and I think he is going to win the Art Ross Trophy for the leading scorer in all of the National Hockey League this season. And now the moment most of you have been waiting for, I'm going to be giving you my take on who is going to win the Stanley Cup. Now again, in my predictions video, I noted down the teams that I think have a legitimate shot at winning the Stanley Cup. Out of the Eastern Conference, I think it's a three-horse race between the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Washington Capitals, and the Tampa Bay Lightning. In the Western Conference, things get a lot more open, as I saw at least six teams that I think could realistically be winning the Stanley Cup, or at least getting into the final. So I went with the three California teams, the San Jose Sharks, Los Angeles Kings, and Anaheim Ducks. And then I looked at three teams from the Central Division, the Chicago Blackhawks, the Nashville Predators, and the Dallas Stars. So I think there's nine teams that really could have a shot. But in the end, I had to narrow it down. So I looked at uh, various factors and finally decided which teams I think are going to represent their conferences in the Stanley Cup Final. So actually what I'm going to be giving what I'm going to be doing is giving you my Western Conference final and my Eastern Conference final. So I'll be naming you four teams and then telling you who I think is going to move on from there. So in the Eastern Conference, I'm going with the Tampa Bay Lightning against the Washington Capitals in that final series. I know a lot of people think the Pittsburgh Penguins can do it again. They just won the Stanley Cup, but there's something kind of called Stanley Cup hangover. I think that's going to affect them a lot. They lost some key guys. Sidney Crosby's out with a concussion for the first couple months of the season. 
And I think overall, they're still going to be great this year. But I just really like the teams in Tampa Bay and Washington. And I think they have more scoring, more depth, and more all-around talent. And I think those are going to be the two representing the Eastern Conference. But in the end, in a series between those two teams, I think it's going to be a big battle between the two superstars, Steven Stamkos and Alex Ovechkin. And I give the edge just barely to Alex Ovechkin. And then you look in net and in goal, and you have another two superstar goalies, Ben Bishop and Braden Holtby. But in the end, I give the edge again to the Washington Capitals with Braden Holtby, the reigning Vesna Trophy winner. So because of that, I'm picking the Washington Capitals to represent the Eastern Conference in the Stanley Cup Final. Now heading over to the West, uh, probably a surprise pick for a lot of you, but my Western Conference Final prediction is between the Nashville Predators and the Dallas Stars. Both of these teams, I think, have elite scoring defense, pretty solid net minding, and they also have some really good scoring as well. So when you look in goal, Pekka Rinne of the Nashville Predators is one of the better goalies in the NHL. And Dallas Stars, they have a pretty solid tandem as well with Antti Niemi and Kari Lettinen. They didn't play great last year, but I predict they bounce back and really help the Stars out. On defense, Nashville has probably one of the best groups in the league. They just brought in P.K. Subban in an absolute monster trade this season. One which was an absolute steal for Nashville, by the way. But they can add him to a defense that already includes Roman Yossi. And I think that pair of Yossi and Subban, assuming they play together, will be among the best in the NHL. And that's really going to help them out. Dallas is John Klingberg on defense. He is another young superstar. And he's extremely talented. He's really going to have to step up and lead that back end because there's not really too, too much depth behind him. But I think he should be enough to keep Dallas at at least a solid, mediocre, middle-of-the-pack defense. And then they can rely on that crazy offense to score their way out of the games. Uh, as I've mentioned before, Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan, those are two of the best players all around in the NHL. One of the best duos. And they make an absolutely monster first line that's extremely scary for anyone to play against. But then on that second line, they have Jason Spezza and Patrick Sharp. Uh, people who, on most other teams in the NHL, would be playing on the first line. So that's a really scary lineup for the matchup game with Nashville. But again, Nashville doesn't have uh, Nashville doesn't have uh, Nashville's offense isn't really something to shrug off as well because Nashville's got some pretty solid players up there. Philip Forsberg is extremely talented. They just brought in Ryan Johansson last year with that trade for Seth Jones. And, you know, they just got an all-around pretty solid lineup. You know, James Neal's good. They got some veterans like Mike Ribeiro, Mike Fisher. And it's definitely not that bad. I just don't think it's going to be able to compete with the offense that Dallas has. So even though I give Nashville the edge on defense and in goal, in the end, offense wins championships, at least in my opinion. And I'm predicting Dallas is going to blow Nashville out and find a way to advance to their first ever Stanley Cup final. So then in the Stanley Cup, my prediction is that we got a game between the Washington Capitals and the Dallas Stars, two extremely great teams. You know, the Stars have a bunch of superstars on offense, as I mentioned before, Sagan, Backstrom, Spezza, Sharp, but then the Capitals have so many great guys as well. Backstrom and Ovechkin are another great duo that lead that first line. Then Evgeny Kuznetsov has really shown that he's an elite scorer. And I think this is the year Andre Burakovsky. He surprises a lot of people and breaks out to become a really great secondary scorer for the Washington Capitals. So in the end, I think the offense is pretty evenly matched here. And then I look back on defense, and again, it's pretty solid for both teams. I'd give that maybe the edge slightly to Washington, although it's definitely close. So at least at that point, I'm thinking they'll be pretty, pretty solid and pretty evenly matched. But then I look to uh, a thing that's mostly a determining factor for me, goaltending, because goaltending can really shift the way a game goes. And I just look at what Dallas has in net, and Kari Lettinen and Antti Niemi, while they're decent, they don't really inspire confidence, and I'm not sure they can hold up over an entire seven-game series after they've played through the entire regular season. And they can't, and Dallas won't be able to rely on that offense when Washington can match it with their superstars as well. 
And then in Washington's end, they have Braden Holtby. As I said, the reigning goalie of the year, Vesna Trophy winner. Uh, best goals against average in a long while. He tied the single-season wins record for a goalie. He is an absolute monster in net. One of the top three goalies in the NHL right now, I'd say. Maybe top five, I'm not sure. And I think in the end, he is going to be the difference maker. And I predict Washington will win the Stanley Cup, beating the Dallas Stars in seven games. Okay, so that's going to do it for me. Those are my predictions for the NHL awards, at least all the major ones. And then again, my Stanley Cup prediction. I think it's going to go to the Washington Capitals over the Dallas Stars in six games. So you heard it here first. If it does happen to actually take place, you can look back at this video and look. I said it like nine months early. So there you go. I don't know. Knowing me, my predictions are usually completely wrong. Uh, last year, I picked the Ducks to win the Stanley Cup, and that didn't really turn out so well. But who knows? I thought I may as well throw down my Stanley Cup picks just in case and give you kind of my reasoning behind them. So that's that. And then this wouldn't be an MJ Madden's video without me asking you for your opinions. So please let me know down in the comments below who do you think is going to win the Stanley Cup in this upcoming NHL season. I love hearing your thoughts, and I love hearing your reasoning behind it as well. So again, let me know in the comment section. Give me your prediction, and maybe in how many games as well, because I love hearing that from you. So that's going to do it for me. If you guys want to see more like NHL-themed videos, then be sure to hit that like button, because again, the season starts tomorrow, and from that, we have like nine months of content. So again, it's a great time to be alive if you're an NHL fan and a fan of the channel. So definitely get excited because I got some really great new things that will be coming up soon. A good time to be a fan of sports overall in general, actually. We got NHL season, then also NBA starts up. Baseball playoffs are in their midst right now. Uh, NFL is right going on. So again, a lot of stuff's happening. There's a lot of new exciting content that definitely will be dropping soon, so keep an eye out for that, and if you want to stay notified of it, then be sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, but that's going to do it for me, so thank you guys all so much for watching, and take care.